Hey guys, welcome back to the Non-Immigrant Student Podcast. My name is Tolu Lope Ulukomi. If you're new here, welcome again. We're still um, on season two where I invited guests, you know, who have come to the U.S. school um, to hear their stories and their journey. And today we have two very interesting guests all the way from Ghana. Um, <laughs> they're my friends and, you know, in a short while we're going to share how we met, you know, and all of that. But today, the title of today's episode is Going Back to Ghana, an option or not. So in the short time that I've known them, um, one of them is unflinching about her decision to go back to Ghana. And I have someone else who still wants to stay back here at school. And I just wanted to compare, you know, their decisions, why does one of them want to stay, why does one of them want to go? And I hope that I mean, you learn a thing or two. And yeah, I will be allowing them introduce themselves. And I'll start with a for the... <laughs> go back and yes yeah, so i'll let them introduce themselves thank you so much for coming to the non student podcast ifwa so thank you so much for having me and <laughs> um, i'm ifwa sewa namiche in cancer and um, i'm an llm student for those who don't know what that means it means um, i'm doing a master's in law and i'm a lawyer back home in ghana and I hope this podcast will be very interesting. And so thank you so much for having me. Of course, of course. And Abna, can you also introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Abna Oponfosu. I'm also studying my master's in law here at Cornell. And I'm also a lawyer back home in Ghana. So I'm here for a one-year program. And that will be the end of my journey in Cornell. And thank you, Tolu, for having me here. Sure, <laughs> of course. Um, so I usually do this on my podcast where I ask people to share how we met, your own version of the story. I don't know if you guys remember the first time we met. Mm-hmm. Okay, so okay, I've not remember. So let's have not share her version of the story by share mine. So I met Tolu the very first day that I went to church here in Cornell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I just randomly Googled churches in Cornell. The top one that came was... His tabernacle. Shout and out then, to you, Pastor Chad. <laughs> and Pastor Jade, yeah. And then, yes, it was one of, I think it was like the, my second week in Cornell or so. So I was just there during worship and then she came up to me. We were supposed to go around and say hi. Mm-hmm. And then she came up to me and said hello and said she was Nigerian. I was yeah. so excited. Like, yeah. finally, I'd seen another African. Yeah. So, yeah, that was really refreshing. That was how I met <laughs> I think you guys were together. Yeah. Were we? Yeah, we're yeah. together. I, I, I walked okay. out. Immediately I saw them. Like, who are these tall, beautiful girls? <laughs> they definitely look African. And I'm going to go and talk to them. And I did. And it's funny that you said you were excited. Because you guys actually gave me straight face. Like, you guys were very calm. I mean, you were happy and all. But it was just like, who is this person coming to meet you? You know? We but, hadn't seen another African or other black oh, person. I think. I so we're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and then eventually now we've had brunch together and you know, at least I've, with the little conversation we've had, I was like, I think there's more um to the story that I'm hearing and that's why I want to talk to you about it. So but before we talk about your decision to stay or to go, let's just go all the way back. So the truth is that anytime I meet Ghanaians, I'm usually like, Oh my god, that's that's my West African sister, you know, because of how close Nigeria and Ghana is and all the beef we have <laughs> and all that. But um so there's to me there's already a natural liking for this person, you know. Please no shade to my East African friends. I still love you very much, my South African friends and all that, but <laughs> it's just always different. Um so I want to know what was it like growing up in Ghana, you know. Mm-hmm. Us in Nigeria, we think, yes, we think our music is great, our jollof is great, our jollof is king, by the way, sorry, no, no shit, <laughs> no offense, but, but, you know, there's, there's just so much, it seems like Ghana has a good government, you guys have the gold, you have the light, you guys are calm there, but what was it really like growing up in Ghana? Um, who, let me start with Ifwa. Mm-hmm. I think everybody's story would be different, but for me in particular, I was, I had a very happy childhood. Um, for anybody who is in Ghana, I don't know if you know this place called Gimpa. Um, I've lived on campuses my whole life because of my parents' profession. Mm-hmm. So my mom um, is a lecturer. Mm-hmm. So we've lived on campus. So it's, it's been quite a sheltered life. Mm-hmm. I've not really exposed to um, outside. Mm-hmm. My life has always been on campus. Mm-hmm. So any activity that I had had to do with like people whose parents were also lecturers, mm-hmm. um, Personally, it was happy and exciting. I wouldn't, I, w- I wouldn't really say that I suffered, you know, lights out. You know, there's this thing my fellow Ghanaians you know, we call it doom so. Mm-hmm. There was a period where we had that in Ghana. So the perception also about Ghana having a very good government, 
maybe as compared to other African countries, I may say that our government has been very progressive so far. Mm-hmm. And we've not really we've struggled but we've not really struggled. Yeah. So yeah, it's been it was very exciting okay. for me. Um so thank you very much Ifa for sharing that. You talked about living in a sheltered environment and being on campuses. So were your parents like professors or Yeah, so my mom my mom is the professor. But my dad is a lawyer, mm. so because of my mom, we, we had to, we had to live on campus. Mm. So growing up, I lived in Accra, that's Gempa, and presently I live in Kumasi on mm. Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology campus. Mm. So that goes to show what I mean by having lived a sheltered life, mm-hmm. not necessarily living in a um, much boy much boisterous neighborhoods, mm. but then living on campus. I'm sure everybody um, can figure out how that's like. Mm. Okay, thank you. If for and for you, what was it like growing up in Ghana, Abna? Okay, so I would also describe my childhood as quite sheltered, but in a different way. So, hmm. <laughs> for me, I come from a family of five. I have two older brothers, and then I was I'm the last child of my parents, and. My mom runs a school. She mm-hmm. runs a primary and junior high school. Mm-hmm. That's how we call it in Ghana. I think it'll be middle school mm-hmm. here in the US. So I used to go to a school. I went to a school from childhood, from ever since I was born to like finished middle school. So I just used to go to school with her. I'll sit in the car with her and go to school and come back home. She knew all my friends. I'll have cousins who come home. Mm-hmm. So that was the kind of childhood I had. It was mm-hmm. Small life, small school. Mm. That was the kind of setting I had. Where in Ghana? Oh, sorry. I grew up in Kumasi. Oh, it's also okay. a small town as oh, okay. compared to the capital city. Okay. We didn't have a lot to do. I'll describe Kumasi like Ithaca. Oh. <laughs> Kumasi should be something <laughs> like Ithaca. That's mm. where Cornell is. Mm. So, yeah. I basically did my whole childhood with my mother. Moving mm. up and down with my mother mm. and my cousins and... Yeah. Do you have any siblings? Yes, I have two older siblings, but they were in a separate school and they're about five years older than me, so I didn't... I wasn't so close to them when we were children, mm. but now we are quite close. So it seems to me that um, education is a big deal in Ghana. Mm-hmm. Or, or it's just or it's just like one in ten because two of you grew up on campuses. Because for me, in primary school, I had Ghanaian lesson teachers. In fact, my teacher in... Primary three, primary five, and primary four. I think we were all Ghanaians too. So, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't mean anything. Um, so, you know, talking off of that and your family backgrounds, growing up quietly, would you say that's just a Ghanaian thing? Because I see most of you two are very. Qu- you guys are calm. You guys are not as aggressive. Or, or no, I, I don't want to say as ambitious too. But you know, there's a certain aggression that comes with being too ambitious that I would say Nigerians have. That I haven't really seen even in my Ghanaian friends. You know, shout out to Eugene, Beryl, Sam, you know, and all the other Ghanaians I've met here. But would you say it has anything to do with your upbringing, or you know, that's just how your country is? I think it, it might be a general Ghanaian personality trait mm-hmm. of us being calm as compared to Nigerians. Of mm-hmm. course, like Nigerians, <laughs> you guys are <laughs> on a different level. But I think generally Ghanaians are much more calmer if we are comparing. Mm-hmm. Are much more calmer than um, Nigerians. Mm-hmm. But personality traits wise, mm-hmm. I think I'm not so outgoing. Mm-hmm as compared to maybe other Ghanaians. Mm. Like, in my little circle of friends, mm. like, with some of the experiences we've had together, mm. I'll be, like, happy, yeah. jumpy. Maybe not as compared to how you might be. Yeah, no. But I can be happy, <laughs> yeah. jumpy, and all of that. Oh, so, sure. yeah, generally, I would say that Ghanaians are much more calmer. Yeah. And as, like, personally, too, I'm, I'm much more calmer. Calmer, I see. And by the way, just to clarify, when I say if I mean Nyamichi. Am yes, I saying yes, it properly? Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> I think that's your full name. So, Abna, do you mind telling us where you went to school? Like, what university? Your primary school? What was you like did you go to boarding school for secondary school mm-hmm. and what was the experience like and what university did you go to okay so after junior high school i went to st louis senior high school in kumasi as well mm-hmm. and yes i was in the boarding school and i want to just go back to what you were saying about Ghanaians being calm mm-hmm. and whether our nature is, mm-hmm. has something to do with our upbringing mm-hmm. when i went to form one mm-hmm. First year and secondary school, mm. this is what the seniors told us that form ones are to be seen and not heard. Mm. <laughs> so that thing has a lot to do yeah, with I think I, oh, I see. to be quiet. Yeah. I'm yeah. naturally a quiet person, but mm-hmm. I also had that upbringing where 
look, you don't speak unless you are spoken to. Wow. You don't yeah. express your yeah. opinion. You have what? to just be calm and yeah. composed wow. until you are asked to speak. Yeah. 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 That's something that has to do with the Ghanaian upbringing. Mm. It's, it's cultural. Mm. And funny enough, even though we are West Africans and we have a lot in common, yeah. the Nigerians are quite different. Yeah. Very different when it comes to that. They're very expressive. Yeah. So that's one of the things mm. that I got from senior high <laughs> school, so, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So after secondary school, I went to Kwame Kumar University of Science and Technology okay. as well and studied law. Mm. Yes. And when did you graduate? I graduated in 2017. Mm. And then from then, I went to Ghana School of Law in Accra mm -hmm. to do my professional law course. Mm -hmm. And I was called to the bar in 2019. Oh, interesting. And why did you decide to study law as a child? Is it like... Is it like the thing where they say you can either study engineering, medicine, law, or be a failure, or whatever? For you, why do you study law? It, it largely has to do with that. Um, the professional choices in Ghana or in West Africa or Africa generally are limited because you study one course and then after your education, you realize that you don't fit quite well into the job market. Mm. But other than that, I think I chose to study law at quite a young age because I was curious and my teachers encouraged me that because of my curiosity, they think I'll be a good lawyer. So I grew up thinking that, okay, I'm curious, I want to know a lot. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. And when you say teachers encouraged you, why, why not parents? Like, would you say your te you had really good teachers that they would oh, pay okay. attention? My parents definitely wanted me to do law from quite early, but mm. my teachers as well, knowing my strengths and my weaknesses, mm. they thought I was someone who liked to read, mm -hmm. someone who liked to ask a lot of questions, mm. and then they thought those were traits mm -hmm. that would do well in the legal profession. profession yeah. So I grew up quite young from class six. Mm. Knowing that, okay, I want to study law, I want to study law, I want to yeah. study law, and then I did it. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Okay, and then for you, if we are so, um, for primary school, secondary school, did you go to boarding school? Which university did you go to, and why did you decide to study law? Yeah, um, very quite similar to Agnes. I went to, um, as I mentioned earlier, I, my early upbringings were in Accra, so mm -hmm. my primary education was at Legon, mm -hmm. and then my high school education was at St. Louis, the mm -hmm. same as Abna, so mm -hmm. exactly what she said about mm -hmm. you're not supposed to be... Um, Wait, did you guys know each other while you were in St. Louis? Yeah, we did. Really? But she was a year ahead of me. Oh! Yeah, that's a whole different story. Oh my god! No, no, I have to hear it. Did you guys know you were coming to Cornell together and no, all that? No, we didn't. we didn't. Did you guys lose touch after St. Louis, like before university? No, so um, we went to the same university as well. So I was in oh. the same class with her in university. But we lost touch after university. No, but she went to Kwame and Kroma, you went to Legon. No, no, I went to Kwame and Kroma University. That's for university. For oh. my... um um. Primary education is when I went to Legon. Legon. Oh, okay, okay. Because I know there's a university called Legon too yeah, in Ghana, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, they have their primary um, school oh, as well. Oh, I see. Yeah. So for university, I went to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology okay. as well. That's the best university in Ghana, right? Yeah, like that's what oh, we are <laughs> I have a friend who went there too. I know it's well spoken of, and all nations are so. Early. I don't know. I, I just know that I love Nigerians also. I'm also going to ask you guys what it was oh, like schooling in Nigeria. <laughs> but oh, yeah. to be very honest, right now, I would say that if like you want to do law, mm -hmm. the best place to be is Kwame Nkrumah University of Science mm. and Technology. I'm sure people would say that because Ligon is known for its arts, mm. it's better to go to Ligon. Mm. But if you are looking at the stats, mm. Kwame Nkrumah is way better, better if you want to pursue law. Mm. Oh, I yeah. see. Yeah, and to answer your question about um, why. I wanted to do law. Mm -hmm. I if when I was younger, there was this inauguration of judges mm -hmm. on TV, mm -hmm. and the way they dressed, it mm -hmm. might be very flimsy, it might be very childish, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. But the way they dressed, mm -hmm. their robes, mm -hmm. it was it looked it all looked so exciting to me. Yeah. So that's like the earliest memory of why I wanted to do law. Mm -hmm. I remember asking my mom. Oh, these judges, how do you become a judge? Oh. And then she told me, Oh, you have to be a lawyer first before yeah. you can become a judge. So, yeah. of course, like that's the earliest memory I have. And were they Ghanaians? Were these judges yeah, Ghanaian yeah, judges? Yeah, oh, okay. Ghanaian judges. Okay. And it was being showed on TV. Mm. So, like, how they were, their ropes, you know, with the um, um, senior judges in the country, mm. their ropes are different from the lower judges. Mm -hmm. And their yes, ropes are very. Yeah. They're nice. So why, why, why do lawyers wear the white hair? Like, what's with the white hair? Colonization, my dear. Oh, really? No, because, you know, 
common law uh-huh. they have come and it's originating from the UK okay. and in the UK that's how they dress oh. so if we are incorporating what the UK has taught us based on colonization oh. we are basically mirroring and copying what they are doing, doing. oh I see exactly so I personally think that's why because our country is hot we have yeah. to go these yeah she said hot like I, but yeah, I just learned a new Ghanaian slang today uh, con- when you were saying you, you were hot yeah, and okay. I'm now we're hot it doesn't <laughs> really <laughs> In Nigeria, when you say a girl is hot, it's like, oh, she looks she's good looking. No, so when you kept saying, me, I'm hot, I'm like, wow, okay. No, I meant I'm hot as in I have too much going on. No, right yeah, now. I see. Busy. I see. <laughs> so that's my earliest memory wow. of wanting to be. And I think the influence of my parents as well. Mm. I think I mentioned earlier, I have parents who are lawyers. Mm. So marrying their lifestyle. Mm. And how far they've come. Yeah. It's also encouraging and hearing their stories when yeah. they go to court. Yeah. So all of that influenced my decision. Well, that's very interesting to see actually. And and, and I see both of you actually started from much younger. Like because well, me, it was hard finding, trying to know what I wanted to do. I don't think any teacher, the only teacher that ever encouraged me asked me to go into writing. Because I was in literary and press and debating, and I used to write like the best essays in my assignments. But that was it. But what you said about dressing up too, I remember that for me, I wanted to come an account because I like the way bankers in Nigeria used to dress then, you know, wearing suits and heels. And I thought, wow, I want to look like this. Mm-hmm. But when I took that to my my beautiful Nigerian parents that I'm always grateful for, but they're like, accounting? That no, 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 but you can do engineering. You can, you know, and they started suggesting other things. And they were in oil and gas industry too. So, and I mean, I can't blame them because at that time, that was where the money was. So, mm-hmm. of course, they will encourage you to do that. But now I have a sister in my house who might be studying law. She's going to be the first in our family and everybody's happy for her and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. Any, anyway, so thank you for sharing that. And I wanted to ask, so let me ask, let me ask Abna first. What was it like schooling with Nigeria? I know I had a lot of friends from my high school who actually came to Ghana to school. And I hear there's, I mean, there's the good and the bad, but did you have any Nigerian friends when you were, when you were at Kwame Kroma? No? Yes. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> we had a few Nigerians in our class. I think they were about 10 mm-hmm. or 12. Yeah, like 12. Yes. Mm-hmm. They kind of used to do stuff together, yeah, okay. just like how communities come together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. close knit. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get to interact with them much, mm. unfortunately. Mm. And yeah, I don't have much to say. I think. But I in had, class, I had one Nigerian mm-hmm. friend, but she left right after first year. She went mm-hmm. to school in the UK. Oh. She was actually my friend, but the rest of them not so much. They mm-hmm. were always sitting together and mm-hmm. huddled together. But when they were in class, were they like, excuse me, sir? You know, were they always like asking questions in class? You know, no, throwing parties? Enough, no, yeah. so maybe Contra- they were the calm Nigerians. Nigerians. Ma- wow. Yes. Okay. Fine. <laughs> Nigerians because these Nigerians they were very I remember there was this a girl called Daluchi mm-hmm. Thelma mm-hmm. if I'm remembering correctly like mm-hmm. they were really nice yeah so wait are you saying other Nigerians are not nice please oh no like my experience with them, <laughs> them I'm actually yeah. still in contact with these girls I mentioned wow yeah, oh so, interesting yeah and Dalu was calm so I wow. don't know whether no. maybe that's just their personality well, tree yeah maybe, possibly maybe possibly they were influenced by the Ghanaians who were studying, studying with, with? <laughs> Nigerians were very quiet. quiet. Yes. Well, I mean, fair enough. I mean, we're still growing up too. That's like okay. teenage mm-hmm. age. So, so people are still finding themselves. Anyway, oh, okay. yeah, that's okay. One thing I realized about the Nigerians who came to study in Ghana, they were much, much younger yeah. than the rest yeah. of us. Oh. So we're always wondering how they pulled that off. I think in our first year, someone was even 15. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, that's sure. common. I think that's it's, common back okay, at it's home. Common for it's you common for like people. 18. 18. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. Yeah, it's common for people to go in 14, 15, 16. I went in at 17, so but I think that's one common. Okay, so after all of this studying law, you guys are happy. You were called to bar. Were you called to bar as well, Ifwa? Yes. Okay. Yes, to bar. Bar. So after all of that, why did you decide to come get a master's in Cornell? Or oh, in the US? Why did you? What, what influenced your decision Do to you come to? you want the truth? Or you like, you want I want, is your, answer? It's your truth. So <laughs> please, I want the full truth. So yeah, let me start with Ifwa. So why did you decide to come to the US? Like what in, first of all, when you left, when you were called to bar, did you work? Like just walk us through the process from when you started working, and why you said come to the US? Yes, yeah, so um, in Ghana, once you've been called to the bar, there's something called pupillage. Mm-hmm. So the pupillage is also like a working period. Mm-hmm. So pupillage is around six months to a year. Mm-hmm. Pre- previously, it was depending on the firm, but right now, the mm-hmm. law is that pupillage is for six months. Mm-hmm. So I did pupillage with a judge, mm-hmm. right? And that was for six months. And then right after my pupillage, or even before my pupillage. What is pupillage, by the okay, way? Okay, so pupillage is when you, because you are a new lawyer that has come out, Mm-hmm. The 
practice is that they don't believe that you are equipped to go before a judge. Mm. You are still rough. You mm. need guidance. Mm. So you are paired with a lawyer who is 10 years at the bar or more. Mm. So you can apply to various firms and then through your practice with the lawyer, mm-hmm. once people age is over, the perception is that, okay, now you are um, qualified enough to mm. appear before a judge. Mm. You've learned enough to know what it means to appear before a judge, the procedure mm. it takes to appear before a judge. So that's entirely what pupillage is about. Mm-hmm. So after pupillage, or even before pupillage um, ended, I started applying to law firms because mm-hmm. even after pupillage, depending on where you work, if it's with a judge or if it's a law firm, there's no guarantee mm-hmm. that you would stay with that particular law firm. So it's best to maybe apply to other firms. To, I don't know, to figure out your chances. Chance, yeah. yeah, so I applied to a law firm and I was fortunate enough, I went for an interview and then I was picked. Mm. So I started working with the law firm as a junior associate. Oh, and okay. I'm still with the law firm as a now, um, mm. as a junior associate because I took a steady leave. Oh, I didn't want to take chances yeah. and then resign, come here, go back mm. and start the whole interview, looking for a job Enjoy. process all over again. Wow. So my law firm was kind enough to grant me a steady leave. Mm. And then I was giving a steady leave and then, yeah, I came okay, here. So that, okay, so that now it's making sense. But anyway, just clarify, if one is one who wants to go back to Ghana, <laughs> I'm like yeah. the one who wants to stay in the US. Yeah. So um, you understand each person's stories. And um, in you coming back, like, are you going to get a higher pay rise? Higher yeah, so like to answer the second agreement. part of your question about why I applied to Cornell, mm-hmm. why I wanted to yes. do my master's. So in Ghana, whether we like it or not, you know, name matters. Mm. So in applying to um to do my master's, I looked into Ivy League schools. Mm-hmm. Predominantly like Ivy League schools, of course, meaning in the US. Mm-hmm. So I applied to um five schools. I applied to Cornell, mm-hmm. Columbia, mm-hmm. and um, UPenn, Georgetown, and Berkeley. These are all good schools. Yeah, they yeah. are. I was ambitious. Yeah. I was ambitious. As you should be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I was fortunate enough to get into these schools. So in our board. You got to offer Yeah, so Georgetown put me on their wait <laughs> list, but then look at you now. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, okay. and then um, I now boil down to which school was going to um, assist me in mm-hmm. terms of fees mm-hmm. because let's be honest, the prices, the fees are quite exorbitant. What's and, the tuition here for law school? Yeah, so for law school, um, everything sums up to nine ninety-eight thousand and some change, mm-hmm. but the tuition itself is seventy-one thousand and some change for a year. For a year, exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I was fortunate enough that um, the law school gave me um, a partial scholarship of forty thousand. Okay. So with that. It was as compared to the um, the um, scholarships I got from the other schools. Mm-hmm. Cornell was the best option. Mm-hmm. And so, what would you say helped you get that scholarship or qualify for the scholarship? To be honest, I didn't necessarily do anything um, spectacular. I'm sure maybe my personal statements and my grades is what helped. Mm-hmm. Because for Cornell, I didn't um, apply for any special scholarship on the side. Mm-hmm. My scholarship came from the law school itself. Along with your admission. Exactly, along so. with my admission. So I didn't do anything. But for Columbia, for example, mm-hmm. um, in, my, in applying, there were so many scholarships. And I applied for, there was this one called the Human Rights Scholarship. Mm-hmm. And sadly, I didn't get that scholarship. So when the... Uh, um, when Columbia gave me scholarship, it was it was very small. Mm. So comparatively to that of Cornell, mm. the best choice was coming to Cornell. Oh, no. yeah, so yeah, that's the main reason. Okay, thank you for sharing it for us. So then let's go to Abna. So Abna, please walk us through, like when after being called to bar, what did you do in Ghana before coming, and why did you choose to apply to the US? Okay, so after I was called to the bar in 2019, <laughs> I. Well, it's quite similar to what Ifwa did, so it would sound quite repetitive. Mm-hmm. I applied for jobs, mm-hmm. and I started my pupillage in one of the law firms in Accra. I practiced for two years. Mm-hmm. I did mainly litigation, mm-hmm. and I also did some company corporate compliance work. Mm-hmm. And after the pandemic, no, I planned to come to school right before the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So I started my applications, and this pandemic came up, so everything just was halted. Mm. So the following year, mm. I reapplied. Mm. And actually, I had some schools that I could I deferred my admission for, but I didn't go to any of those ones. I think that was Georgetown and Fordham. Mm. But I I changed my mind and decided to look at the Ivy League schools because, of yes, course, girl. Ivy League is... <laughs> once you go to an Ivy League, the world is your, like, yeah. your stage. You yeah. can get into... You can 
there are lots of opportunities mm-hmm. that are available for you. Yeah. So I settled on Cornell mm-hmm. to do my master's in law degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing, guys. Okay. So I see, I, I see a very steady growth, steady process in your life. Is, God, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, but would you say like you have other friends that have it this easy? I'm sure it wasn't easy anyway, but like, would you say, would you say you're proud of yourselves? You know, with how your life has progressed gradually, gradually. Did you set out wanting to do a master's in law degree or? Yeah, um, certainly. So I'm from a household where. <laughs> My parents don't believe your basic education is over till you're done with your master's. And I think a lot of Ghanaian families can say the same thing yeah, in terms same. of um, how education is very important, right? To As like part of our value system mm-hmm. and all of that. So yeah, I did set out. I knew from early on that I was going to be doing my master's. Mm-hmm. Whether I did it immediately after law school, two years down the line, three years down the line, I knew the master's, whether I liked it or not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At once, I'm my father and mother's daughter. I was mm-hmm. doing the master's. Mm-hmm. So I would say that I've been fortunate enough. I don't know whether everybody has had this opportunity because let's not kid ourselves. Mm-hmm. The application fees, mm-hmm. coming to these schools, mm-hmm. You need some assistance. Yeah. It's either you're getting it from maybe you've worked hard enough to get that money to um, pay for these application fees to these schools. Mm-hmm. But then if you're also fortunate enough to have family to help you, mm-hmm. that really goes a long way. Yeah. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I think... Yeah. I, I definitely agree. To, and Amna, did you also get funding coming to Cornell University? Yes, I also got partial funding, like, if it was on with my admission. And the other schools... I didn't get funding at all. I think Fordham gave me a very small amount, mm-hmm. which couldn't even compare to what Cornell gave me. So that's that was one of the motivating factors for why I came here. And okay, I'll continue with Abna. So for your schooling here in one year, like what is one thing you love and one thing you hate about the US? <laughs> like what is your mm-hmm. most favorite thing and your least favorite thing? And then also what what has what's the Cornell experience like? So for other Ghanaians who are trying to come to do law school in Ghana like should they come or should they change their mind but no truthfully I I see the green on you guys faces trust me and even when people reach out to me on LinkedIn and tell me oh my god I got into corner and I'm like don't come don't do it don't don't do it but but you know like I so like for that what what yeah just share your experience of coming to the US and all that so Wait, what was the first question? You asked so yeah, I'm actually okay. So my first question was, what was your, what's the, what's your most, what's, what's the most oh, favorite right. thing okay, okay. and your least favorite thing, okay. and then how has the law, Cornell Law School experience been? Yeah. Okay, my most favorite thing I would say is experiencing a challenge. Generally, in my professional career, in my profession, and in my academic life, I. I'm drawn to things that I find challenging. Mm-hmm. I feel successful after I've been able to overcome a challenge. Mm-hmm. So my experience here, I would say, has been very intellectually challenging. Mm. You sit in class with people from so many other countries, yeah. the Asians, mm-hmm. the Indians, mm-hmm. the Americans, and mm-hmm. then some of the questions they ask you are like, how did you even think, think. of this? <laughs> like, this is amazing. Yeah. So it challenges you intellectually. Yeah. And also personally... Mm-hmm. There are lots of things that you discover about yourself mm-hmm. that I've discovered about myself mm-hmm. here, just interacting with other people. And yeah, so I think the challenge of a new environment, environment. is something I found intriguing. Yeah. On the other side, what I didn't like was I did also discovered so many, so many loopholes in my own education and my oh. own upbringing yeah. that makes me look back and say, I should have done this. Yeah. I should have gone to school here when I had the chance. Yeah. I should have done, should I have even done this course? So it makes you... Sorry, wait, let's back up. What do you mean by you should have gone? Did you have an opportunity to school outside of Ghana? Yes. As a point, I had an opportunity to school in the UK. Oh. That was after... Um, after my LLB, after my undergraduate degree, instead of going to law school, mm-hmm. I could have gone the UK track and been called step by in the UK and all okay. of that. Yeah. And I didn't. So it's also made me look back and think, should I have done, done. should I have taken certain decisions in my life? Because uh-huh. I feel like my education would have been more complete. Oh. So it makes you soul search. But then again, I'm, 
I think about it and I feel like, oh, I'm still content where I am. Yeah. I'm an attorney in my country, which is yeah. the most important place to me, yeah. even though I'm here okay. and exploring opportunities. Well, I, lo- I love the patriotism from you guys. I got, <laughs> I, you know, I, I feel like I used to be like you guys before with Nigeria, but it's really winning. Like, I, I wish I could say something like this. I'm an engineer in my country. What? I'm, I'm so inspired. <laughs> but, but, okay. So, I, I'm not once running away from this question, but I'm coming to you closely. What was the law school experience like at Cornell? I want you to see it. I'm starting no, I'm starting with you, Abna. <laughs> I'm starting with you, Abna. I think it would be better for you to start with a four. <laughs> the law school experience at Cornell. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not the best person to answer this question because I'm an introvert. So it okay. takes me a longer time to be able to network and mm-hmm. make friends and all of that. And my time here is just nine months. Mm. So I haven't had a very wholesome experience, I must yeah. say. Yeah. My... The best part of my experience has been academically, mm. not socially. Actually, yes. Socially, I've made some acquaintances. Some people have been really nice. Yeah. I've gone to a few gatherings mm. and parties and tried to connect as much as possible. Yeah. But personally, the time is too short for me to establish so many contacts yeah. and all of that. But the law school... First, first of all, can I, can I cut you? I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. So actually, another impression I had of you guys, I think even after I had, when I had newly met you guys, I was like, I met these two girls at church from Ghana and they're like, oh, those ones, they don't like to go out. You invite them yeah, for stuff yeah, and they yeah. don't go. I'm like, oh, really? They look nice to me. So I already had that impression mm-hmm. of you guys. That, and you remember at the brunch when Ifa told me that she was not coming again? I was like, oh my God, they're, they're actually those people. But then you guys still showed up. <laughs> Then you guys now, or well, you guys still showed up. You guys, by the way, you see them in my vlog. I have a vlog on my Instagram where you can, um, if you can put a face to their names, if one, I'm not. But okay, to continue. So yeah, I hear you uh, about this. So, yeah. mm-hmm. Back to the Ghanaian thing about how you're always like yeah. naturally introverted and not yeah. wanting to go anywhere. And, yeah. Well, as we mentioned, we live very sheltered lives, so it's mm-hmm. difficult to break out of that. Yeah. So if I think you should answer about the law school okay, experience. So, okay, so let's go to Ifa. So Ifa, what, what has been your Cornell Law School experience like? It's just, it's quite similar to Abness, to be mm. very honest. Mm. I think that um, I had so many expectations coming in, thinking that, oh, I was going to meet so many new people, connect, mm. make new friends internationally, open up. But it didn't happen that way. Mm. I don't know whether it's my own fault or just the way the society was when I when I came in. But um, to be honest, I think it's my own fault. I think I could have done better mm-hmm. trying to get to know more people. But I was just so comfortable. Fortunately or unfortunately, mm-hmm. I had somebody who I knew coming in. So it didn't That's make me Abna. Abna, exactly. Mm-hmm. So it didn't make me it didn't force me to break out of my yeah, shell. I see that. If maybe I was alone, that yeah, would have pr- probably would have been a different story. If I didn't have somebody coming in. Mm-hmm. And mind you, we also had another friend who was going to be coming in with us. Mm-hmm. So coming in, I already had the mindset that oh I'm good. Like mm-hmm. I'm coming with people, mm-hmm. I'll be fine. Of course I would like to make friends, mm-hmm. but it's not like it's not by force it's yeah. not mandatory because <laughs> i have somebody i can be rolling with every yeah. day and it just so happens that um especially with this semester we took um similar classes together so it made it made it much more easier being much more comfortable mm-hmm. not forcing me to open up because if i was in classes where um i was alone mm-hmm. i'll be forced to talk to somebody sitting next to me yeah. or like just talk to much more people but then that didn't happen so so, so would you say that so would you say that the experience is so now you know here they they make it a big deal with networking professional like build your network when you become alumni you're going to need these people all that and all that so now that you're rounding up your program would you say do you really feel like you lost anything like you're missing out on anything i think the networking depends on what you're coming here for and Mm -hmm. your next steps Mm -hmm. so for someone like me who wants to go back to ghana Mm -hmm. i think at the forefront of my mind networking was not major Mm -hmm. because if you know you're going to be staying here or you are seeking opportunities here networking is very important Mm -hmm. because you need to get to know people and people might even link you to law firms and stuff like that so it'll be very important to network Mm -hmm. it doesn't take away from the fact that generally everybody has to network Mm -hmm. but knowing your what your plans are Mm -hmm. makes it much more decisive whether you're going to be networking or not Mm -hmm. so i think knowing that i was going to be going back Mm -hmm. it didn't push me yeah it didn't push me although i still think you need it yeah 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 definitely okay but yeah Okay, so I have one tip. Knowing how I am and how I'm introverted and all Mm -hmm. of that, Mm -hmm. I put myself in certain situations where I necessarily have to network. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, I quickly signed on to be a teaching assistant Mm -hmm. so I can interact with other students who Mm -hmm. weren't even in my my year group. I'm also working as a research assistant. I'll have to interact with 
other professors who don't even teach me. So that's something that helped me network a bit and establish some form oh, of network here yeah i must be such a nerd like I, I was i was thinking she was going to say i i started going to parties or i've been I tried, accepting invites i tried going to parties i think i went for a few like i was yeah. always trying no, yeah, we, yeah yeah I, I mean, yeah even i met you guys at other parties so don't mind me i'm just kidding but. even in the law school I always when there's an event or they yeah. announce something that oh we have halloween we have yeah. th- we have thanksgiving we have something for fall i'll I say if one let's go, go let's yeah. go let's go please let's go, go yeah <laughs> so we we'll just we we'll just show sure. up and and try yeah. and talk to as many people as we can. I see, but it seems to me that you guys are actually very academically sound. Of course, even though you won't be here, but um, so for me, I really struggled with the education system when I came here. I don't know if it's how what's A star for you guys in law school. Do you guys have the A star, A, B plus? What's your grading okay, system so like? The, um, the master's came, and with that, um, you have high honors, honors. Um, what's that? <laughs> so for high honors, it means you got an A plus or an A. Oh, honors! Oh my God, this Ghanaian accent. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Honors. Oh, please, for my Nigerian people, they, they mean honors. <laughs> okay, hi, Ennis. Oh my god. I, okay, yeah. I'm not saying it the right way, Abna. Honors, no. <laughs> Okay, hi honors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. What, what, what are the others? To be honest, okay, I'm so. This is how the master's curve compares with the. JD. JD Kev. The, okay, so the JD is the Doctor of Law mm-hmm. program here, or the Juris Doctor mm-hmm. course. They use the normal grading system, which is A plus, A, A minus. B plus. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's so ours is high honors for an A plus, mm-hmm. honors for an A or A minus, or something like that. Mm-hmm. It, well, okay, if, okay yeah, so, so we have high honors, honors, satisfactory. Mm-hmm and unsatisfactory so it's those four and then the a and the b fall somewhere in between in between yeah. to me i think that's still fair because i remember when i came here i mean I, i'm sure the workload is different maybe that's why it's graded differently but i hated myself during spring semester spring semester was my toughest i've spent two falls now and one spring here but that spring that i had i thought i was going to die like there were so many um trying to prioritize your time, the academics, and then you see yourself fighting to do so well in your academics, mm-hmm. and yet you end up in a B plus. And B plus is what? 89, which is still a very good score, right? But that's a B plus, and it's heavy for a four-unit class, you know, mm-hmm. that you could really do a lot to your CGPA. And so I just really hated being here. I just hated the fact that I had to work. They had to put me in groups. And then, and it was too late by the time I hacked it that if I kept taking a lot of managerial classes, which is why I decided to do engineering management anyway, I'll be put in groups. My grades would depend on other people in the class, yeah. your grades will be curved, and these are people who don't even care. I mean, I was going to school with MBA graduates. Please, no shit on my MBA friends. I mean, that their grades were non-disclosure. Like, no recruiters or companies were not required to ask for their grades, so they could do the hell whatever they wanted to, you know. If you know, but for us in engi- college of engineering, where everything, you know, if you if you know what it's like to be with engineers, you know, everyone is trying to do the most, yeah. and then. So it, it was really tough for me to come to that place to accept that I was still good enough, even though my grades... I mean, my, some grades will, will not reflect it, some might. But for you guys, did you have that yeah, challenge? Okay. And how did you over... Like, you know, this mental health thing, I finally accepted that I was maybe... Ha- you know, there are days I would feel like, I think I'm having anxiety, I think I'm scared. You know, those words that we don't use in Africa, yeah. in, back at home. So it was it was really eye-opening for me. But let me start with Ifwa. For you, did you ever go through that? And yeah. how did you I even wanted it? to say this like for starters for anybody who is trying to um, apply to any of the schools here yeah, like one encouraging thing and um, this is my viewpoint i may be wrong but in ghana it seems like sometimes when the professors and lecturers are grading you they are looking for ways to try and make you fail yeah that's that's i may be wrong maybe people have different ex- people have different yeah. experiences but one encouraging thing i can say is here if you put the work in mm-hmm. you're going to pass mm. i can speak mainly for law school if you do put the work in there's like the professors here are much more encouraging they are trying to help you pass yeah. professors might even reach out to you mm-hmm. when you haven't reached out to them mm-hmm. reaching out to you asking you do you need help with this particular paper you're writing mm-hmm. if you need materials my doors are always open like i've had that experience so i can say that's one encouraging thing i can say for anybody anybody who is trying to apply mm-hmm. to C- cornell i can't speak for the other ivy league schools but i'm sure it might be the same thing but for yeah. cornell that's one encouraging thing one challenging thing another thing when we came initially we had this course called introduction to american legal system mm. 
my day, I tell you. <laughs> it was like this robust course. Like we get to Cornell, we haven't necessarily settled yet. Mm-hmm. And you take this two week robust course and you're supposed to write exam at the end, like I think two days after the um, the course has ended. Mm-hmm. You don't have time to, in Ghana, usually in exams, once the um, semester has ended, you have about two weeks mm-hmm. or a week, roughly three weeks to prepare for examination. That's one thing, one big cultural shock I had over here in terms of the academics. You don't have any time, speaking for the law school, you don't have any time to prepare. So as the semester is unfolding, you must be be preparing for exam as the semester is unfolded. Going back to the IELS course I was talking about, we finished the course on a Friday. My dear, tell me Monday we were starting the exam. What? (laughs) And you are supposed to you are supposed to cram everything that was taught to you the two week period mm-hmm. and write the exam on Monday. And I'm sure the questions are not objective. It's not like you know how it is in Ghana. Is it oh, like okay, with this one? It wasn't objective, but it wasn't essay either. It was mm-hmm. um the um, maybe the so answers were essay 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 yes. Okay, okay. Essay essay yeah. It required paragraph answers. Oh, but then of course, if you put the work in and you study, you would pass. Yeah, that's the thing. As I keep on repeating, the professors here tend to pass you if they see an effort has been placed in yes. your work. Yeah. Unlike Ghana... Yeah. I, if it wasn't perfect, your grade can be perfect. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So if you work hard, you yeah. can't get the A+. plus. You mm. can't get the... Um, a minus, you can't get the B. Okay, we are all not striving for Bs. Yeah, but you but can't get the A plus. You yeah. can't get. And speaking of, like, I've not, I've not did well. Like, oh, we, no. we did well. Are you really happy? Oh yeah, like, yeah. like I was really Thank proud you. of her when she. Oh. There's this thing in the law school called what's Dean's called? List. Kali Award. Kali Award. She got like. What's Kali, what does Kali stand for? Like the best student in a particular course. Okay, Abna. Yeah. Okay, I'm co- I'm coming to you shortly, Abna. Yeah. So in the law school, there are certain courses mm-hmm. that. Um, that have Kali Awards attached to it. And I mm. think last semester she did one of these courses mm. that had the Kali Award attached. And I remember when she told me about the whole Kali Award. Mm. She was so excited. And you see, that's the thing. Yeah. I think how she studied was based on how maybe she studied in Ghana. Mm. The kind of efforts yeah, she put course, in Ghana. It's true, it's so, true. because yeah. how you know in Ghana, mm. the professor is going to fail you. Yeah. So, you have to. Yeah. <laughs> I get, I, yeah, I, I do. Yeah, I, I can relate to that. Yeah. We, yeah. we us like always having to study first principle. Like back at home, yeah. you have to prove it but here's like they give you a whole cheat sheet with all the i remember i took an operations class in business school they they actually call it cheat sheet mm-hmm. but the the requirement is that it cannot be more than one page in front and one page at the back i'm like yeah. you, wow for free you give me a che- in this country yeah. must be nice book, okay. exactly yeah, yeah it's open book wow so, so so thank you for sharing so if i'm um, madam kalia words yeah <laughs> making us proud <laughs> So for you, like, what was you? You you actually said you enjoy how academically or intellectually challenging can be. So why do you enjoy it? That means I'm guessing you didn't struggle, or if you did, if you did, how did you overcome it? Did you also take this introduction to American legal yeah, system class? So how yeah? So how did you do? And you know how did you end up with the Kali Award? Oh, hmm. the Kali okay. Award. I don't I don't know how I ended up with this. Honestly. <laughs> I that, that's such a humble, oh, a honestly, false I, I humility. I, wow, I don't really? Know how I ended up with this. Yes. Wow. That particular course has been the most difficult course for me in wow. this entire. But I really studied this because I knew I knew that. Look, I don't understand this course so yeah. much. I have to do everything I can to pass. So I did everything. I attacked it from all angles. Uh-huh. And when it came, they said Kavya. I was like, wow, okay. Uh-huh. But <laughs> yeah. back to the law school experience. I advise a lot of law students or lawyers who are thinking of coming to the U.S. to come to Cornell because the teaching is amazing. The training is amazing. Mm. Like, there are certain skills that even though I'm a lawyer, Mm. I realized I was lacking. Mm. For instance, last semester, I did a transactional lawyering competition. Mm. So you get to compete with other lawyers from Mm. different countries. Mm. Like, it's it's very good. I've done mediation. I've done mock mediations. I've done I've done negotiations, and I'm going to do an arbitration on Saturday. Wow. So it really teaches you literally everything that you need to know mm. practically and from a book yeah. to be able to succeed in the legal profession. So the law school is very amazing. Wow, well, I'm, happy, yeah, I'm right. happy to hear you say that. Yeah. But um, I was going to ask what challenges you faced and how you overcame them, like academically. Okay, so like F1 said, the professors are great. For instance, this Kali Award that I won last semester, the professor was literally available 24-7, about a week to the paper. You can call him anytime, 
any day mm. and he's available to just explain into detail everything that he already taught in class mm. so the professors were really helpful i would say mm. yeah Okay. okay, so okay, that's I'm um, I'm happy to hear you guys have good things to say about yeah. law school. Oh. Um, yeah, if I was going to follow up follow up with what Abner was saying about the courses we took here this semester, I took this clinic. That's another thing about Cornell Law School. You have these clinics which are very competitive to get into. So. Mm-hmm. Thumbs up to anybody who gets into Why is it called a clinic? And because with the clinic, you are doing just practical work. Okay. So you actually have real clients you are helping. Mm -hmm. So I took, I was in this international human rights clinic and we had um, this client called Melissa Lucio Mm -hmm. and she was on, um, she was being convicted for murder of her daughter Mm -hmm. and was, um, the punishment was that she was supposed to be executed. She was supposed to actually be executed last 27th that's this past wednesday Mm -hmm. and the clinic worked so hard like we had to go all the way to texas to talk to jurors Mm -hmm. who sat on her case determine whether if they had maybe new evidence Mm -hmm. would they have ruled differently oh my god it feels like a movie like all these movies (laughs) to be honest my dear this semester it was crazy i'm not even going to kid but then we worked very hard and right now if you have to ask me she's she's not free but she's not going to be executed the court is giving her a new child yeah based, exactly based on our efforts yeah. as a clinic yeah. and the clinic we are just 12 but mm. you wonder okay how the 12 people manage all of this yeah. but it, it goes to show you how um so, devout yeah. the pro- pro- professors we have are mm. to our clients mm. so i would encourage anybody who is even applying mm. to t- look into these clinics i know mm. abnato was in a clinic this semester where mm. they're also helping mm. it's about well, the securities clinic right mm. yeah. yeah yeah but you know before you go on first of all and this is probably just a segue but please when when you have cases with clients, you know how in movies, you know, we know if they're right or wrong, if they did it or not. Yeah. For you, do you have to do you have to believe? Is it your job to think whether she did it or not? Like honestly, going up. Do you know what it is for them to convict a mom of killing her daughter? Yeah. Like, do you ever face ethics issues? Like, oh, I'm not going to defend her. Like, what if she actually did it? Or your 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 duties to your client? For you, what was that like? Um, okay, for this particular um, for this particular client, Melissa mm. Lucio, mm. coming in, the client had been there from the last semester, the fall semester, and I joined the clinic in the spring semester. Mm-hmm. So coming in, I was, of course, like anybody, I had my doubts. Mm. But mm-hmm. then looking at the evidence that we had, mm-hmm. right, it showed that she did not kill her daughter. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the evidence is quite glaring, and mm-hmm. you wonder why um, maybe the defense counsels, prosecution counsels made such obvious mistakes. Can I ask her race? She's Hispanic. Okay. She's. <laughs> she's his- let, let, I'll stop there. Let's but, go okay, there. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's graduate in peace. Exactly. Let's graduate in peace, please. She's, yeah. she's Hispanic, but mm. that doesn't take away from the fact that, unfortunately, in the United States, mm. there are oftentimes false confessions, false convictions. Mm. So she just so happened to be one of those unfortunate people who yeah. were dealt a bad hand. Yeah. But clearly, it also shows that the system does work. Yeah. Because. Right now, she's not in a position of being executed. Oh my god! So and I can like, imagine that you all would have been fighting because you're fighting for someone's life. Where is the I did not eat, my dear? Oh like my god. we're waiting for our professor to come and tell us that. Mm. Okay, to waiting for what the court was going to you say. See, yeah. And luckily, and now death by execution or by rule is it the chemical one in the chair or by hanging? So it depends like, on the right states. Mm. Um, not every state in the U.S. actually practices the death penalty. Okay. So mind you, Melissa was um um convicted in the state of texas so okay. some of the southern states do have um what's it called death the death penalty, penalty. Oh exactly <laughs> and depending on the states they have the means of execution so mm-hmm. not every state practices the same means of execution so yeah it varies from state to state interesting well this is very interesting and is there an interesting story from your clinic as well yep, i'm not <laughs> what did you do what do you do in a securities clinic <laughs> okay so the securities law clinic we help investors who have been victims of investment fraud excessive trading and all that with their investment banks mm-hmm. like if you oh. buy shares in let's say twitter mm. and some unfortunate incident happens mm-hmm. usually they come to clinics to help them we had we have a case that has been quite slow that mm-hmm. i was working on mm-hmm. the it was an elderly man who Am I supposed to be sharing this? Exactly, I just realized. Wait, no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can share Melissa yeah. Lucio. Okay, because yours is public, but okay. Okay, yours me, is attorney client privilege. Okay, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, it just occurred to me too. But all these things, really, did you guys ever watch Suits? That was the first season I ever watched as the, in my adult life. And I remember I just loved Harvey, Jessica, you know, all the, are those things too real? Much, all those court cases. Is it real? Too much drama. And I don't think in Ghana, certainly not. Okay. That's not how the practice goes at mm-hmm. all. You really deceive yourself if you think that's what's <laughs> like that's what happened. So you guys don't wear nice suits, go to the court, bash the judge, you know, pull a mic cross on them. Bash None the of judge. them. You decided for contempt. You find your ass in the prison. <laughs> yeah, okay, I see that too. Yeah. That's, that's but of course, movie, like yeah. you can dress nicely, but then the other side is that you are covered. You are wearing a wig and gown. Oh. If you are fortunate and you go to a court where the judge is very flexible mm. and so the thing is that when you go to a court, most often if the judge is not robed, mm. it's much more respectful as a lawyer to not be robed. Oh, okay. Exactly. Okay. But then when you go and the judge is in their full regalia, mm. you cannot go just walking in with your suit. So wait, you mean having them? They they like how? No, it might be different in the I US. Move it. The oh, US okay, they okay. don't wear the whole wig and gown. Yeah. Of course, in the I'm to, I told you that we got our whole system from the, the UK. UK. Yeah. Okay, so yes. Okay, okay. But in the US, I'm sure in terms of dressing, mm. it might be like what you see on suits. Mm. But in terms of procedure, how yeah. the law goes, I think is entirely different. Suits is too dramatic. It's, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, now so to round up, I've 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 allowed I've wanted I wanted you guys to share this whole story because it want, I wanted to bring you guys into the final question: Why are you staying, Abna, and why are you not staying, Ifa? But let me start with Abna. So for you, Abna, why in all of this, in all this fun you seem to be having, like in law school and all of that, why have you decided? to stay um what's the career space looking for like for you here and what what practice do you want to go into and all of that ah this is a tough question that Tolu has been asking me for a while okay i'm sorry no i i okay i know i know how it can be to ask about job and all of that but it's also fine to talk about if you're still waiting and all of that because it's still a process and it's still a journey and the truth is that you're still going to end up somewhere you know but it just takes the truth it just takes time but yeah but okay oh whatever you can share whatever you're comfortable with either oh no no it's not necessarily about even getting a job or anything but as to why i'm staying Mm. i'm wondering if i have a clear cut (laughs) answer for that but generally i feel like i'm not quite done with my experience in the u.s Mm. i want to have a career that has international presence and Mm. nine months studying in an ivy league fine Mm. that's great but Mm. i feel like i'm not I'm not quite done. Mm. I want to have some work experience. I want to make more connections. And I want to have international presence. And I don't think it's enough. And looking back in Ghana, Mm. most of the people that I would think are successful, Mm -hmm. I would say that they did spend a couple of years in other countries countries before they came back and built a career that I find admirable. So that's one of the reasons why I'm still searching for my next step here in the u.s mm-hmm. so that's that's where i am now and what what legal what in what's it called is it what legal practice or what what industry in law <laughs> do you want to go into okay so not sure i'm using the right jargon like, i'm interested in the financial services industry oh. i'm also interested in corporate law mm-hmm. international trade mm. transactional law stuff like that so what? basically business law oh, I, I would say so i i think that all the people that i all the successful Ghanaian lawyers that I admire mm. have had very strong international presence and still have it, still have ties to the US or mm. UK or mm. these other admirable countries. Okay. Okay. And then that's why I'm still searching for my next step here. And how would you, how has the job search been going for people in law school? Um, what's the OPT like? Do they sponsor? What visitors do they give you guys? Like if you, took, okay. if you were to get a job? So, the job search for LLMs is very difficult, I must say. It's much easier to do the Juris Doctor program. The Juris Doctor is a recognized law degree, the main law degree here in the US. Mm. The LLM is sort of like an additional specialized thing that you do to add value to yourself. So mm. it's very difficult for LLMs mm-hmm. because you're recognized as a foreign associate or a foreign lawyer. So you have to oh, look for a space where they want 
they are looking for lawyers from Africa or lawyers from Ghana or a company wow. that has some sort of business or presence in Ghana or Africa. Wow. That's where we fit in best. Other than that, we fit into international organizations mm. and in-house roles where you don't necessarily practice as a lawyer. Yeah. And what's the difference between LLM and JD, by the way? So the LLM is a one-year course. Mm-hmm. For most Ivy Leagues, you get to choose the courses that you're interested in. So I chose courses like business organizations, financial institutions, mm-hmm. M&A, mm-hmm foreign direct investment Mm -hmm. but the juris doctor course that's like for Ghanaians and Africans that's like doing an LLB Mm -hmm. but instead of it being an undergraduate course it's a graduate course so you have to do a normal undergraduate course before you come and do the juris doctor for three years that's how it is here so after after your juris doctor then you write whatever bar exam whether it's New York or whichever state exam that you Mm -hmm. want to write that's the normal track for becoming a lawyer here in the US what of law school which law school? Like okay, here, so here, here. here the law school is just three years. Instead of oh. doing it for, instead of doing an LLB for four years in Ghana okay. and doing two years of professional law mm-hmm. to become a lawyer in Ghana, yeah. here you just need an undergraduate degree, mm-hmm. any undergraduate degree at all, and decide that, oh, I now want to be a lawyer. So, so then you go and do your Juris Doctor. Doctorate for three years oh and then you write the bar. bar. That's oh. that's the track here to become a lawyer. Oh, that's what? That's what? <laughs> seven years? That's four seven years. Oh yes. my goodness. Four years undergraduate, three years. The, and engineers will be there feeling themselves. <laughs> seven years. Even I know medicine too is like double of that. And then engineering is what, four, five years and we're done. Wow, that's interesting. So yes, if we <laughs> our lovely Ghanaian patriots. <laughs> Thank you so much, by the way, Amna, um, for sharing that. And what visa? Sorry, I, I forgot. Uh, what visas do they give you when so, you get a job here? Is it H one B or G visas or? So, I guess it's different for legal um, practitioners. Or so is it no, same? it's the same. We have a one year OPT, mm-hmm. and then if you get a company that sponsors you, you get the H one B. Oh, it's the same. It's the same. But it's one year. Is there anything like STEM law? No, or? we don't have. We don't have the STEM. The whole STEM thing. We just have one year OPT, and then if you are fortunate, okay. you get an H one B. H one B. Okay, so I'm wishing you all the best, Abna, in Thank that you. in your next process. So yeah, back to you for even as a roundup. So why? Why are you going back to Ghana? I know. <laughs> and guys, let me just give you a, a backdrop. So, Amna has 60 days to stay in the... Sorry, A4 has 60 days to stay in the US even after graduation. And we graduate May 28. 60 days is what? Two months. So, you won't have till July. Abi, mm-hmm. you were supposed to... She even has a lease. She even has a lease till end of June. And her flight was June 3rd, but she moved her flight up to May 14th. Please. Please, are you not as confused as I am? <laughs> like, why are you such in a hurry to go back? We're all here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, let me, take your let me start take your from time. the very beginning. Yeah. I personally think usually, you know, what you hear from family, what you hear from your parents growing up, a lot of time shapes your value system, mm. shapes how you perceive things, what you believe. Mm. So my parents are from like have very humble beginnings, mm. but have made it's what you say, have made it in life. Mm. And invested. Yeah. I hope they can't yeah. see me, but I'm doing this. Yeah. And look at you being humble, but it's fine. <laughs> And mm-hmm. growing up, I also had extended family who really, um, even though they were in the States, in other um, countries, really struggled. Mm-hmm. So the whole maybe American dream, mm-hmm. the whole living outside, mm-hmm. the whole concept of boga. Boga, mm-hmm. <laughs> boga is somebody who lives outside and comes home and is looking. Is that a Ghanaian slang? It's a Ghanaian slang. Like boga, like hamburger. Like B U R B O R G A. I think after that, I think Nigeria is called IJGB. I just got back. Well, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. It wasn't appealing because my mom used to say, if you are in your country, mm-hmm. you work hard, you make a name for yourself, mm-hmm. you are easily you can easily be comparable to somebody living in the states. Mm-hmm. Of course, the money is different. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So hearing that over and over again yeah, yeah. growing up as a child yeah. always hearing you can make it if you work hard in your country, country yeah. you can make it if you work hard in your country and also having seen it yeah. in the lives of my parents mm-hmm. it was 
it was a no brainer. Yeah. So I always had like my life, my life has always been planned. Mm. Even though I spoke to um, recently this friend of ours, Ayo, mm. who said that you plan, but then invites God into your plan. Your plan yeah. So yeah, I've always had this plan for my life, knowing that, okay, become a lawyer, come here, do a master's in an Ivy League school, come back to Ghana, knowing how our Ghanaian society is having an Ivy League education takes you very far. Yeah. So having an Ivy League education on my CV will push me, especially in the government sector, mm-hmm. to a very good position. Yeah. This is the part where I might disagree with Abner a bit because my mom, um, my mom is somebody I really mirror my life mm-hmm. with, mm-hmm. and she has had a lot of international opportunity despite the fact that she didn't do most of her schooling in the U.S. or mm-hmm. in any in international sphere. Okay, she did do her PhD in the U.S., mm-hmm. but that wasn't the reason why she got the international opportunities working with the U.N. Mm-hmm. So work, having high governmental positions opened those doors for her okay, yeah. working in the U.N. Because usually in Ghana, I would say that when you're in maybe a high governmental opos- um, position, mm-hmm. when any opportunity comes up with the U.N. Mm-hmm. or any international body, they usually take people in the government sector for those roles. Those roles right. So so being positioned in that place gave her those opportunities to and it was a Ghanaian that was the president of the UN, right? Yeah, um, Kofi Annan, Annan for some is. time. What of now? Is he still there? No, no, he's unfortunately he's passed away. Passed. Oh, yeah. I see. So having that and seeing that in at the back of my mind, I'm like, I do have um international um goals in mind and I think I've mentioned it to Abna before. Mm-hmm. But having seen how my mom did it mm-hmm. makes me think that oh I can do it, but even though I'm in Ghana, Ghana yeah. it doesn't take away from the fact that I may not be based here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my mindset is not being limited. And of course, maybe I can see I'm just comfortable and I don't yeah. want to struggle in another man's yes, country. Girl. So I that also, I also love the energy. No, it's true. Because it's a rat race. It becomes a rat race exactly. sometimes. Yeah, and so. it becomes hard. And yeah. I don't want to have miss home. Of course, like working hard and making it here. Why not? Like mm-hmm. the dollars should be earning mm-hmm. in a law firm here can't be compared to what I'm being well, paid back from in Ghana. Guys, um, him or me. What's the what's the what's the uh, annual salary for a lawyer in Ghana no in the US in the US we are talking if we are in a very good firm we are Mm -hmm. talking around two hundred thousand dollars a year right I'm now (laughs) Two fifty. She gave straight face like two fifty. Don't insult my future salary. Wow, <laughs> two fifty. And you know that's like okay, software engineering. The roles. range is from one ninety to two fifty thousand for mm. big law firms. Mm. For public interest, it should be about the least should be about sixty thousand mm. to. 90. 60 to 90 but for that's, big law firms yeah. and for corporate law yeah it's about 190 to 250 thousand that, that, that's good money yeah it's, mm-hmm. it's a lot of money mm-hmm. so that's what i'm saying so for my my main reasons let me in rehash and wait just to confirm 190 to 250 thousand dollars right mm-hmm. Don't, yeah let's just add that mm-hmm. yeah yeah dollars oh i'm sorry <laughs> we are talking big money, mm-hmm. money? Yeah. but for ghana have you done comparison what's that like oh it's nothing compared <laughs> like in my law firm currently mm-hmm. Not to, I don't want to put my firm on blast, but yeah. I'm told right now they are paying about four thousand Ghana cities. That is the main um, amount a, a month, month yeah, okay. for a junior associate, and, and that's as twelve. That's what like forty eight, so like fifty ish. Yeah. But that that should be a lot. Wait, did you say cities or dollars? No dollars, CDs. cities, Ghana. Oh, 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 but you but Ghana. you know you put money is close. Like your money, your currency is still good. Like six, seven cities makes one dollar, right? So that's like five hundred and seventy one dollars a month. Really yeah. <laughs> yeah, but okay, that's okay. aside what you get in commissions. Oh. So depending on how many cases you bring mm-hmm. um, a month, mm-hmm. your pay may increase. But then what I'm talking, the 4000 is the base salary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So of course, depend, but of course that's for my law firm having a corporate setting. Yeah. And for Ghana, that's not bad. Yeah. But then my plan eventually is to go into the public sector. Yeah. And going into the public sector, you need some kind of international exposure, yeah. for which reason I came to yeah. do my master's yeah. at an Ivy League school. Yeah. Because if we are being honest with ourselves, if I'm to apply for a job, it's sad, mm-hmm. but that's just the reality. In applying for jobs, sometimes in comparing the schools, all these things are taking into consideration in getting the job. Mm-hmm. So it boosts my chances in working in a 
governmental institution. I hope it does boost my chance. Yeah, Don't let me get ahead of myself. No, it will, I'm sure it will. Yeah, <laughs> but I hope it does. Boost. So that's like the main reason. So hearing all the time that you can make it in Ghana if you mm-hmm. work hard, mm-hmm. seeing it happen mm-hmm. in the life of my parents mm-hmm. is the main reason why I'm so sure that I want to go back because they can work for me. So you think that you making it is, doesn't necessarily have to do with your government. It's about the individual. You know, because if as a Nigerian, I wanted to believe that for myself too. I feel like even just the the economic scene in my country, how a lot of things are, I feel like it, my success might still be hinged, you know, or like stopped. But for you, would you say your government is also doing a good job to making like Ghanaians like you who believe in your country do well? And um, partly, uh, when I when I mention my parents, mind you, my parents, I'm sure maybe some people can relate to it. Were brought up in the village. Okay. Like they grew up, my my mom grew up with her grandparents. Mm-hmm. My dad grew up with his grandparents, mm-hmm. and they managed to find, like, come out mm-hmm. of that whole setting and find a place for themselves. Mm-hmm. Of course, during their time, some may say it was easier then, mm-hmm. but I think that now it may be a bit like it might be a little difficult. Mm-hmm. But then they've opened the door for us to also try and do better. better yeah. So I'll say our governments can help in the sense that if you do better for yourself. Mm-hmm. Why is there any reason why the government will not employ you? I see. Wow. Do you understand? I, wow. Yes, I think it's making Standing yourself much marketable. Well. <laughs> yeah. Making yourself much more yeah. marketable yeah. will also make you attractive to any governmental institution yeah. or even a private sector mm. in Ghana. Mm. So I think it's also entirely up to you. And then, so you do your part. The government to that. No, I know everybody says they're moving to Ghana. Wow, I'm so inspired. <laughs> I, I I hope I can say this, but I'm sure it is like that too for people who like. I had a sister who finished from the UK, went back to Nigeria, and now she's doing well for herself. Like even though a lot of things will eventually frust- will frustrate you sometimes, mm-hmm. but you know. I think purpose is larger than location anyway. Like, it, it doesn't really matter where we stay, where we end up. If you if you feel like you're supposed to fulfill something, you should eventually do it. And, yes, I will soon release... I have an episode, too, with my sister and why she said to go back to Nigeria. And we should check it out whenever it comes out. <laughs> okay, and, yes, I think that brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you, guys, for sitting with me for this long hour and doing this. I've also learned so much more about you guys. But before we go... As usual, as my custom is in other episodes, I usually ask about the dating scene for you guys <laughs> or something fun you think you've done, you know, since you've been here at Ithaca. Well, if I let you share, I know we all know that you're hooked, you know, for life <laughs> with some nice looking Ghanaian guy. And by the way, what on the street is that Ghanaian guys are very, I don't know, have you guys? Okay, I want to ask. Between Nigerian men and, Nigerian men always fool themselves and tell the whole world how other girls like them apart from Nigerian girls. But for, I know that I've been hearing that Ghanaian guys are very, very chauvinistic. Like, they like to help their women. They carry their women's bag. I'm a A. Or like, you know, they're, they're so nice. They cook. I'm like, wow. Please tell me more. So please, I'm not What's your experience like at home and here with Ghanaian men? I'll start with, with Ghanaian men in particular. Or, yeah, or Nigerian oh. men, or you know. Please be specific to you. Please be specific to your oh, experience. Okay. Thank you. So, what I would say. Why are you giving straight face? Yeah, this is a very. Uh, why is she giving straight face? <laughs> this, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm trying to remember the Ghanaian men and Nigerian men I've met here. I've not met so much, mm. so many actually. Mm. Or oh, any um, guys at all, like, okay, you know, yeah. Yeah. So what was the experience? For last you? week, <laughs> FY and I and another friend were actually talking about this. Mm. Over here, the dating scene is very different for yeah. Africans, mm-hmm. African girls especially. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can be here, well, from my experience and my other friends who live here, you can be here for about two years, go out every day, wear the best clothes, I know. do the best makeup, and still, <laughs> no. no one will come up to you. I'm not as angry. <laughs> no one will come up to you and yeah, express sister. any form of interest. Trends, Whereas yeah. in Ghana, yeah. oh, I'm sure that's the same in yeah, Nigeria. Is, yeah. You don't have to do too much. You don't have to do too much. You don't have to wear makeup or do anything. You're just walking around the streets and everybody wants to talk Talk to to you. you. Everyone wants your number. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not like that at all. So it's one of the culture shocks that, hey, why, what's going on these days? Am I not... I'm not hot. Yeah. I don't know if that's not what you guys call hot in Ghana, but I can definitely relate. And then... We also call that hot. Okay, okay. And then the thing how they say black girls at the bottom of the chain and then, and you know, yeah, it's a whole... Yeah, and then for black guys are at the top of the chain because of yeah. other girls mm-hmm. want them yeah i can i i definitely um, can understand that but if i doesn't really share those struggles with us so please <laughs> no, you don't take away from the fact that she's probably happily content with her partner but oh. me okay yeah, she didn't okay wait, wait okay wait 
you should not you don't want to talk about oh, it, right? No, I don't okay, mind, yeah, I don't yeah. mind. Um I was actually dating already before I came here. I've been in a relationship for four years. Wow. So okay. yeah. Fortunately, I have company. Fortunately, yeah. I can do FaceTime. Yeah. Fortunately, my boyfriend is also in the US. Okay. So I see him same occasionally. Time zone or no? Same time zone, yes. Okay. He lives in Tennessee. So I see him oh. occasionally. Okay. I talk to him every day. Oh. Yeah. Oh, shout so, out. What's his name? Let's shout out. His to name me. is Kweku. <laughs> like the song. I mean, they yeah, say that's like Kweku is fine. <laughs> what does Kweku mean? Kweku is yes. a Wednesday, male born on Wednesday. Oh, and Abna means female born on Tuesday, Tuesday right? Yeah. And Ifwa means female born oh, on Friday. Friday. See, Ghanaians, can you guys see? I'm, I'm getting to know you guys gradually. Then there's someone that is on Sunday. Kwame. Akwesi. Akwesi. What's the meaning of Kwame? Kwame is Saturday. Saturday. Wow. And these names are so nice. If you hear our own... <laughs> okay, no shade to Nigeria. <laughs> but okay, so for you, if for like, what has the dating scene been like? I share the same sentiments with Abna, mm. but the consol- consolation is the fact that I know I have a partner. Yes. So like, these boys should take themselves. Yay! So... <laughs> I share, I really share the same sentiments with Abna. Like, of course, you can be looking nice and things. Nobody will approach you. Mm. You will get, okay, in my clinic, you get, oh, if I are looking nice today, mm. it's just you're looking nice. The compliments, mm. the general compliments yeah. you get is not, um, can we, can we talk? Yeah. It's, it's, there's no value. And you know, it just goes along with saying that like, even though we all have partners, like, we still want to be seen, heard, yeah. wooed by yeah. other guys. I guess, yeah. yeah, I guess, I guess all girls can say they all share that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I have a partner back home. Mm-hmm. So some may say that it's part of the reason I'm rushing back, but it's not. He's allowed. It's easy to have life partner, please. <laughs> yeah, it's not true. But like, maybe deep down, maybe unconsciously, it might be part of the reason. Maybe yeah. I haven't really focused on it to see that okay, it's part of the reason I want to go back home. Mm. But I'm happy with the partner I have. Yeah. And hi, baby Steven. Oh, shout out to so, him. He's <laughs> <laughs> we are in a good place allow me <laughs> so yeah so it's like part of the reason I'm sure it might be part of the reason maybe I haven't even focused on it but I'm mm. sure mm. unconsciously it might be part of the reason mm. why I want to go home mm. so with the guys here mm. <laughs> so any girl that's coming sweethearts don't, don't try to look for somebody Some- <laughs> it's either you're coming or maybe it's just in it Maybe. Maybe because no, you know, the, I have, we're like five percent black in the whole of Cornell, and we're like what twenty thousand people here. On no, campus. but why should we be just like? Why do we have to just attract um, black guys? True, yeah. Oh my god, my yeah. bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that might just be a preference from me. But okay. yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. Exactly. So it just exactly. maybe goes to show that. And then some white girls are here that they like see black girls as a fetish. You know, for me, I really don't have a problem. With it. Maybe because I wasn't born here or anything. But you know, when they they call us Nubian queens, chocolate mm. lady. The chocolate queen. Some people don't like it because it's like to so some people it's racist. I'm like that's racist. No Nigerian guys call me chocolate queen. No, please. If you want me to be a chocolate queen, I'm fine. <laughs> but but yeah, I can. I, I also understand what that would mean. Mm-hmm. Um, even with long yeah long distance and long, and that's fair. But you you also really shared why you talked about your parents about why you wanted yeah, to come yeah. back. One yeah. of the biggest influences. Yeah, I, I know society a lot. It's not even for me these days. In my new adult life, I'm coming to see uh, there's a new resentment that comes sometimes when you want, when you think about men and how they treat women sometimes. But I also believe that love can. There are still thriving relationships. There's still thriving, you know, yeah. lovers, people that are doing well. Even when we all argue and all that, mm-hmm. um, men can still be good. They're still good men. They're still yeah, good girls. So, yeah. It's so. Oh, you still have even have us some resentment. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, and I don't think you should feel bad even if you were going home for a man. I know some people also tell you that, oh, um, can you do the same for you? I mean, there will always be those doubts. Oh, definitely. There will always be those doubts. Trust me. And, yeah, and men can really be scum. Women too, but I but I, I definitely understand why you might be bothered. But yeah. but I'm happy you have a bigger reason for going back yeah, home anyway. Yeah. And, yeah. Abner, it's also nice to hear that. Um, that I might also have that bias. Yeah. I might also have that bias. <laughs> she has that, that bias. Bias, oh, bias again. Okay, okay. about her wanting That's, to go back. Because her boyfriend is here. So well, what's the bias exactly? Sorry. That I might have the bias are because my boyfriend is here. Yeah, okay, he okay. okay. My boyfriend is also That's in school. True. That's true. Also, also planning here. to stay. Oh, it's, that makes that sense now. I, that I makes admit sense. that I have that bias. But yeah. also, it's I'm not also... T- tied too much to the u.s yeah even if I, I can go to china i'll be happy yeah um i think i'm an adventurer when you yeah. do these personality tests and things yeah. they call something oh, adventure oh so i would be happy to be in turkey or mm-hmm. 
China mm-hmm. or something for a few years, just mm-hmm. exploring. Yeah. Life, life yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, well, it's interesting to hear that someone can be an introvert and an adventurer because I yes. will consider myself an introvert yes. and I'm, I'm sorry, an adventurer, even though I might be a bit um, extroverted. But that's that's interesting. Wow, this is it's very interesting to learn all this about you guys. And yeah. to add to one thing that if I was saying earlier that in Ghana they respect name, I realize that it happens everywhere mm-hmm. with yeah. the school we are coming from. Mm-hmm. In any other country, they will say, wow, you went to an Ivy League. Mm-hmm. So that's why I mentioned in the beginning yeah. that when you go to an Ivy League, the world is your stage. Yeah. Like You have opportunities mm-hmm. around the globe. Yeah. So it's one of the things I want to explore, not just in the US, yeah. but mm-hmm. other countries too I'm open to exploring. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for sharing all of this. Ah, and you said Turkey. Say Toki in Nigeria. Oh, Pastor. You know, so let's not even go there anyway. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> let's not go to the difference in accents. Um, and you guys also shared, I wasn't going to ask any advice you have for anyone, but you guys also talked about, you know, t- you, you told people in Ghana who want to come here why they should come to Cornell, mm-hmm. you know, why it's good to have that international exposure and all of that. So thank you for sharing. One last thing before you go, let me go to Ifa. Tell us something that's not your LinkedIn. Tell us, like, what's oh, okay. not on your LinkedIn? <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> Take your time. We'll wait. I <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm not okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I I'm a baker as well. Oh, I'm a prof- professional baker. Professional. Yeah. Wow. Why did you tell me you could bake my birthday cake? I didn't know. No, the tools. If you had the tools, I would have done it for you. Oh, yeah. I used wow. to. I actually had or have a baking business back in Ghana. Oh. Yeah. Wow. I bake birthday cakes and other desserts. Oh, well, you know, you know, you can do it. It's just she that there's so many regular. Yeah. IG. Wait, no, wait. Yeah, no, no. I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to ask you that as well for your social media profiles because you know here it's just that there's so many regulations in this in this place that I mean you could sell me a cake and I'll just vemo you like you could do it to your friends like and we just it will be called supporting black businesses you know mm-hmm. but but anyway tell us something that's not your LinkedIn a four. I'm so sorry, my life is not as exciting. That's to be very think, honest. If you think hardly i'm sure there should be something you know i'm thinking i can be a stylist like i like going into shops and shopping for people okay like i can spend um a whole saturday mm-hmm. in a boutique and i'll be comfortable like wow. i'll be happy i don't get tired wow. like yeah at all wow. and anybody who knows me can testify to this yeah so maybe i, I should consider something yes, like that, that. No, 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 but yeah i think that's the only thing i can say about something that maybe people don't know so much about me yeah. like i i have time to shop for my friends in terms of clothing especially wow. i should i should come to you i'm really fine yeah i'm big graduation dress yeah i think before. i limit it with then like, I can help yeah. you. I think maybe it's limited to my family. I usually, because if my sister needs a dress, she's like, yeah, me, I'm hot. Mm. Then I'll start looking. Because I'm hot. I'm hot how? Oh I'm, I'm, That's I'm so busy. funny. I'm stressed. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I need so funny. help. I can't get used to it. I'm mm. so sorry for this clown. No, please, no, please don't apologize. Yeah. <laughs> so I think maybe that's something maybe I should consider looking into. So, yeah. But aside that, I don't really have any businesses or any mm. passions. Mm. I think the way I really like clothing mm-hmm. is something maybe I should delve into in my spare time. Definitely. Sadly, this profession is not allowing us. Maybe it's yeah. an excuse on my part. But yeah. But this pro- profession is not allowing us space out into other avenues. Mm. But if I do happen to find my feet, that's mm-hmm. something I would like exploring. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting to learn. And where can we find you on our social media so for everyone who's listening and they want to follow up chat with you bake a cake you know <laughs> plug you into law firms where can we find what's your linkedin what's your twitter what's your instagram okay, my linkedin is my full name abena oponfusu mm-hmm. and my instagram is abnaof underscore Okay, and what of your baking profile? My baking profile is the cake lady GH, but Mm -hmm. I haven't posted in so long Mm because I (laughs) I had I had an assistant but she left right before I came to Cornell. Assistant. She was in deep. Hey, I see me sounding like a Ghana. I started learning A. Beryl is teaching me that so much. I started learning those exclamations. Like a whole CEO, a a whole employee. Yeah, I had an employee. Say it again. What's the Instagram handle? At what? It's the cake lady GH. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Who meets? I'm going to follow it. And if where can we find you on social media? Yes. Yeah. So my LinkedIn is also my full name, mm-hmm. Ifwa Sewa Nyamiche in Kansa. Mm-hmm. And then my Instagram is Nyamiche, the small letter N Y A M, and the number three K Y E. I'm ready to accept any questions, Aww. any concerns anybody might like would have Aww. coming to Cornell. I'm yeah. open. Oh, so. you guys! Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm for you. yeah. Thank you. And you guys know like people, people who have been like my other listeners know that I haven't podcasted in like six months. I haven't released an episode. But after we spoke again during brunch, you know, I spoke to you people and you told me you were you were going back home if one Emma said she was staying. I was like, you guys made me come back to podcasting. So I will never forget you guys. Like oh. now I feel like I mean I don't know when next I'm going to do the next one, but just to think that your stories inspired me enough to want to know man I'm here is a very emotional thing for me to to finally pick this up again because after a point in my life I was so I, I'm happy to be picking up what I like to do and again so I'm really excited for that and I think that comes to the end of this so thank you guys thank you Ifwa thank you Abna I really appreciate it this has been really fun (laughs) this is my first social interview like it's it's really fun to delve into my life (laughs) and talk about myself because I don't even think about these things if someone doesn't ask yeah Yeah, if any last words (laughs) I'll also ask you for your last words Abna yeah um so anybody that wants to come here and the person is frightened, the person is uncertain, the person is unsure, I would encourage you to take the step. And despite the fact that I may not have had maybe a very wholesome experience given my personality, mm-hmm. I'm definitely sure you would enjoy yourself. Mm-hmm. And it's a testament to someone like Tolu who is starting this whole podcast <laughs> that delves into the lives of people like us yeah. who are coming to schools here. Mm-hmm. So I would encourage you to take this step. I know it might be difficult at first, but trust me, mm-hmm. it'll be re- very rewarding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Ifan. Abna, any last... And you said Abena. Is that the full pronunciation? I'm saying Abna, Abna, Abna. Yeah, that's the full pronunciation. Oh, I'm sorry. Abena. <laughs> so, any last words? So I would also encourage anyone who wants to come to the... Okay, I think there's this move in Ghana right now and in Nigeria especially mm-hmm. where everyone wants to run away. It's mm-hmm. like we're escaping our country yeah. Yeah. at all costs. We'll do anything to be in the US. Yeah, It's all well and good to come and gain the experience. But yeah. then again, even though I'm here searching and all of that, don't kill yourself yeah. if you're not able to find whatever it is you are looking for. Mm-hmm. It's all well and good to gain the experience. I would encourage going out of your country to explore a bit. Mm. Just explore your life and see what you can make out of it. But yeah. don't don't die in the search. Yeah. That's what I would say. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I definitely agree to not subscribing to the rat race. I know how it can be. But yeah, and and I think our faith too helps us. You know, God God is also a very yeah. prominent path of our life so far and I'm just so grateful to him that you know all of us are meeting at this point in time. We're at the right place and at the right time. So Guys, thank you so much for listening. If you made it to the end, we love you. Shout out to you as well. <laughs> and we hope that you enjoyed this. We hope you learned it a thing or two. On Instagram, I'm at the non-immigrant student. On LinkedIn, I'm at what Tolu Lokolukom, my full government name. And then thank you so much for being here. And like I always say, if we can do it, you can do it too. So see you at the top soon. Bye guys. <laughs>